What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on to this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're going to jump straight into this one. Okay. Political life of Rome. And although his popularity with the masses was immense, there were men at the top of the Roman political ladder who were plotting against him. Mm -hmm. In this episode, we shall look at the motivations of these conspirators, which led to the assassination of Caesar on the Ides of March 44 BC. According to the Roman history, to see him as a tyrant, and this was compounded by rumors that Caesar planned to overthrow the Republic and become something the Romans hated most, mm -hmm. the King of Rome. These rumors were not unfounded. As dictator, Caesar was proclaimed father of the country. So and then also look what happened after him. Do you know what I mean? Um, literally straight after him is when become emperors. So it was understandable why they were, they were so feared that of what was going to happen, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, of course, like, of course they were, the, of course they were worried because in the end, what they were feared of happened. So it was sort of justifiable, you know? Sacrifices and games were given in his honor, and his statue was included alongside those of the gods in the procession before the games. He was also given a special chair in the Senate made of ivory and gold, in effect, a throne. What? No way. They gave him a throne, basically. That's funny. That's funny. I don't know. I find that tickles me. That tickles me. Furthermore, Cleopatra had recently arrived in Rome, igniting rumors that Caesar wanted to install a Hellenistic style monarchy with himself as king and Cleopatra as queen. Caesar. Again, I'd understand why you sort of would put why you would come to that sort of conclusion you'd be worried about that as well with himself as king and cleopatra as queen caesar took to wearing triumphal garb a laurel crown of victory and red boots and on one occasion didn't stand to greet the senators the roman kings of the past had worn red shoes and they combined oh. with the crown throne and perceived disrespect to the senate to make the rumors look true Ooh, okay. I was, I was like, I was so confused why the red shoes were pointed out there. It sort of didn't hit me, but the fact that the old kings used to wear red shoes makes it just click. The obviously, it's a, it's adding insult to industry, uh, industry, industry, insult to injury to the the senators because obviously that that's what they used to do a small minority liked the idea they adorned a statue of caesar with a crown and even once hailed him as a king a plebeian tribune marillus had them imprisoned for that and in response caesar accused marillus of having orchestrated the events in order to damage his political position okay and had the tribune imprisoned marillus's office was sacrosanct so this was seen as proof of Caesar's tyrannical ways and disregard for the Republic. For some, it was also proof that Sorry, what was that? his office was sacrosanct. So this was seen as proof of Caesar's Sorry, two seconds, guys. Being Tribune, Marillus had them imprisoned for that. And in response, Caesar oh, okay. accused Marillus of having orchestrated the events in order I to see. damage his political position and had the Tribune imprisoned. Marillus's office was sacrosanct, so this was seen as proof of Caesar's tyrannical ways and disregard for the Republic. For some, it was also proof that Caesar did, in fact, want the title of king, and that he punished Marillus because the Tribune had been imprisoning Caesar's supporters. Mm. According to Appian, on one occasion, Caesar was watching a ceremony for the Lupercal Games, which included Antony as consul for that year and okay. the other priests running naked and anointing people. At one point, and wait, what? So Antony and other priests were running naked and anointing people. Antony approached that makes Caesar no sense. 
Some in the crowd groaned at this, others applauded, but Caesar refused the crown. Please. I do remember hearing something about this actually, but I didn't realize Antony was one of the ones who run naked. That's so interesting. Pleasing the majority of people. Again, Antony tried to crown Caesar, and again he refused, mm -hmm. drawing huge applause from the crowd. This has often been interpreted as a staged affair to see how the people would react, with Caesar hoping that he would be welcomed as king. But they didn't, they didn't like it at first, did they? They only liked it when he kept on turning the crown down. Combined with Caesar's other actions, some were convinced that Caesar would use his powers as dictator to become a monarch. In the ancient sources, mm. it is these reasons that are given for why the conspirators decided to plot against Caesar and okay. later dubbed themselves liberators. However, there is also evidence to counter these claims. Caesar forbade any from calling him king. But again, that, that was just to make himself look good, right? Saying that he was not king, but Caesar. Mm -hmm. And Dio points out that he did not ask for any honours. Some of them were enacted by his past enemies, like Cicero, eager to curry his favour. While many of his allies likely thought that he really did deserve the honours bestowed on him. It was in Caesar's interest to therefore try to appease both sides, mm -hmm. accepting some honours while denying the more egregious ones. Yeah. Caesar's punishment of Marullus was arguably overzealous, but it may have been done to try and maintain neutrality with the party that apparently did want him as king. According to Dio, Caesar's hmm. wearing of a triumphal crown was to try and hide his baldness. Similarly, Plutarch claims that Caesar not standing to meet the Senate was due to Caesar's illness, which often made him dizzy and faint if he stood up quickly after being sat for too long. It's just people trying to find justifications, you know, whichever side that you are on, you are just sort of trying to find the defences or the holes within the opposition of the enemies, uh, so the holes of the opposition's argument, and obviously the defences of your own argument um, to make yourself look good and make them look bad. So that's the issue here. I generally think that Caesar just, he, he wanted the power and he wanted to see how far he could make him. I do think he wanted to be the sole ruler and I do think that he just kept on testing to see how far he could sort of push those limits. Anecdote of Antony crowning Caesar. When one considers the image of a naked, boiled Antony offering the crown to Caesar, it's harder to see it as a cunning political ploy. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's arguably much closer to a joke in bad taste, or a charade to amuse the masses. Finally, one must all- Yeah, I think, I think it was, I, I, I definitely think that he, he, he sort of tried to, tried to he, he staged that event. Also consider the question of why Caesar would have wanted to be king. As Plutarch and Dio both point out, he effectively had all the power of a king, mm -hmm. so why also have a title that carried such heavy political baggage in Rome? It's hard to think that Caesar would not have known how foolhardy such an idea was. It's, I think, I think because in history and and to have your name remembered you want the highest acclaim you can get and that's what he was after he was always after that highest acclaim what what's going to make caesar's name be put through the history books and that's what a lot of these historian figures think about is and that's why they sort of have their motivation to do what they want to do um is is to be basically remembered and that's why i think they're so interesting because what lengths are these people willing to go to just to have their name remembered how far are they willing to go um and again it was it, caesar was an interesting one because he he was always trying to toe that line he he was willing to do that bad stuff but he wanted to be perceived as the good guy and it was a very interesting sort of uh line he he stood that's why i enjoyed it so much some modern historians have suggested that the conspirators' idea that they were saving the Republic was mere propaganda, and that many were motivated by more personal factors. In total, there were 60 conspirators, all yep. senators. We know the names of 20, 
but only okay. 12 are described in enough detail in the sources for their personal motives to be assumed. Mm. Marcus Junius Brutus had fought with Pompey mm -hmm. and was spared after Pharsalus. Welcomed by Caesar, he was appointed governor of Cisalpine Gaul. Brutus's mother was a lover of Caesar, and the two men were close. Okay. False but still humiliating rumors circulated that he was Caesar's bastard, and oh. even that his mother had prostituted his half sister to Caesar. Ain't okay, yeah, that's gonna pay you off. Ho oh, ho ho. That's gonna pay you off. If there's rumors that your mum had prostituted your half sister to Caesar, yeah, that's 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 gonna pay you off. Holy Shint and modern historians have claimed that they were likely a key motivator for him. However, mm -hmm. Brutus was a supposed descendant of the semi-legendary Brutus who had ousted the last king of Rome. So many insisted that he be the one to take action against Caesar's kingship. He was the conspirator who had the most genuinely idealistic motive to assassinate Caesar. Okay, okay. An experienced general with a solid military career, Gaius Cassius Longinus was also forgiven by Caesar in the aftermath of the Battle of Pharsalus. He became a legate. So forgiven, forgiven from the same battle as well. In okay. Caesar's army in Egypt but refused to fight against Pompeians. Mm. Nevertheless, he was earmarked by Caesar to be governor of Syria. However, Caesar had hampered his career a few times, preventing okay. him from becoming edile and postponing his consulship. Again, so that's going to pee you off. Though he was made legate, Cassius probably deserved a higher command based on his experience. It's apparent that Caesar never really trusted him, and he was right not to. Cassius had plotted to kill Caesar from as early as 47 BC and genuinely hated Caesar. Really? Okay. So so surely he should have been the main the main suspect of the, the, the conspiracy then, surely. Certainly motivated in part by his Pompeian loyalties, Cassius disliked Caesar for personal reasons mm -hmm. and was the most active about the plot. Oh, he was. He was, he was the most Decimus active. Decimus Junius Brutus had fought with Caesar in Gaul and was one of his most promising subordinates. Oh, really? He was made praetor by Caesar and was set to be the governor of Cisalpine Gaul after Marcus Brutus's term. Caesar loved Decimus, as shown in Caesar's will that named him as a second-degree heir, a fact unknown to Decimus. This Holy. meant that if Octavian had died before, Decimus would have been legally adopted by Caesar and been his heir. How guilty would you feel? How guilty would you feel when you found out, when the will comes out and you find out that information and you was helpful in the conspiracy to kill him? Oh my God, that guilt would eat me alive. That guilt would eat me alive for sure. His Another veteran of the okay. Gallic Wars, Gaius Trebonius, was mm -hmm. one of Caesar's most reliable legates. Caesar had appointed him as urban praetor, then mm -hmm. governor of Hispania Ulteria, and finally consul in 45 BC. However, his year as consul was undermined by Caesar, who appointed a replacement consul for Trebonius's colleague, Interesting. who died just one day before the end of his term which was considered a mockery of the consulship. Trebonius may well oh. have seen this as an insult, motivating him to join the plot. Okay, I see, I see. Hmm, that's... Seems like a bit of a silly reason to be involved now. Yeah, yeah, like, that, that one definitely did hurt. Yeah, I, I think I'm about to find that out. It seems like quite a few of them were trusted. We had two people from the Pompeian faction so far. Uh, like so, we'll see who else was close to him. participated in a failed plot against Caesar, suggesting to Antony that they should murder Caesar. The latter rejected the offer, and the plot had not developed any further. Oh my God! No way! As if Antony didn't rat him out as well, like in the first place. One of Caesar's strongest supporters, Tilius Kimber. Okay. was rewarded for his loyalty with the governorship of Bithynia and Pontus. However, he was deeply annoyed that Caesar did not recall his brother, Publius, who was exiled for unknown reasons, possibly leading to his involvement. 
What a petty reason. What a petty reason. Clearly your brother had done something wrong. Clearly your brother had done something wrong. Oh my god. Like, he's exiled. Deal with it. You're one of the most powerful men. Send money to him. Let him live somewhere else. God's sake. Ah, petty reason to kill someone. Ah, please, ah, please beg his brother still not allowed back. Like, make it all pointless at least for him. Publius petty. Publius Casca was one of the oldest friends of Caesar. Casca appears okay. to have fallen on hard times financially and mm -hmm. may well have been angry that his old friend had not helped him more in this regard. Mm. His brother Gaius joined the plot to support Publius. A tribune of the plebs, Pontius Aquila, was publicly mocked by Caesar when he refused to stand during one of Caesar's triumphs. Okay. He also had some land confiscated and given to Brutus's mother, Caesar's lover, mm. giving him a deeply personal motivation for joining the plot. Again, some of these reasons are just so petty. That one wasn't like worth it really either. Yeah, 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 you're not right. No, you're not wrong. Like, it is just dealing with murdering another person. It is all just petty reasons. It's another man crazy. who was Caesar's legate in the Gallic Wars, Servius Sulpicius Galba, was a thrifty man. He had guaranteed a loan of Pompey's, and when Pompey's land was confiscated, mm -hmm. he inherited the debt. Galba oh. was annoyed and had complained to Caesar, who promptly paid the debt himself. Another debt later emerged from these same circumstances, which Caesar was less willing to help with, much to Galba's outrage. What do you mean to your outrage? What do you mean to your outrage? Sorry, I was saying, he paid off your first debt. So why are you getting annoyed that he wasn't willing to pay off the second one? Petty, so goddamn petty. Yeah, that was a thing I noticed throughout the whole sort of Gallic War series and the Civil War series, like, was the fact that um, he, he rewarded them and was forgiving for so many things, and yet they still treated him like this. It is just sad. Like, like, like I keep saying, I don't think Caesar was the best guy in the world. I think that he did make some mistakes and there was atrocities that he's done. But... I definitely think that he was a lot more forgiving than a lot of other people and a lot of other historical figures out there. And it was just so interesting to see how he, all that leniency got him to a certain point, but it still was a reason to his downfall and um, yeah, to his downfall, which was just so interesting. There were also rumors that Caesar may have been sleeping with his wife. Oh. That Caesar okay, if he was sleeping with his wife, then, then yeah, I, I get why you would want to kill someone there. May have been sleeping with his wife. Quintus Ligarius's life was spared by Caesar after the Battle of Thapsus, but he was mm -hmm. later put on trial for apparently conspiring with Juba of Numidia and threatened with exile. Okay. Cicero defended him, and Caesar pardoned him. Nevertheless, he had been deeply depressed at the idea of being exiled. Furthermore, Caesar had executed a relative of his for taking up arms against Caesar, despite already having been pardoned. These reasons- Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. So Caesar pardoned you, alright, after you planning to kill him, and then, okay, he didn't pardon your friend, uh, your brother the second time but he pardoned him the first time what do you expect what do you expect caesar to do he gave you a chance he can't do it a second time because then he looks weak like what do you expect oh my god dude. this is actually really frustrating this is really why me up because i bet you himself when he saw all of these faces like t like when he turned around or whenever he saw these people stab him i bet you every single one he looked at him and was like all i done for you and this is what you do for me or oh, i'm getting so angry or oh, i am actually getting angry at the thought process of what my mind would be going through if i was in that situation if i was in julius C's situation oh my god with brutus likely brought him into the conspiracy another caesarian legate lucius minucius basilus who served in the gallic wars was made praetor in 45 BC, but instead of being given a province afterwards, was given a huge sum of money. 
This apparently deeply insulted him, motivating him to join the conspirators. I don't the want to pause it anymore. I'm getting so frustrated. Antistius, who seemed to have joined the plot purely out of devotion to his close friend, Brutus. Little to nothing is known of the other eight named conspirators. In all likelihood, some really did believe that they were ridding Rome of a tyrant, as they would later claim. However, modern historians are also right to suggest that it's equally likely that a good many of them were involved, either based on personal grudges or wanting to be a part of the creation of the mm -hmm. new order. Mm -hmm. The sources vary on precisely who was the instigator, but Cassius and Brutus were the ringleaders, the former doing much of the recruiting, with the latter being more of a figurehead his name and reputation crucial in convincing many others to join. Gradually, they convinced the 58 other conspirators to join the plot. Oh, wow. The conspirators did consider one of the most influential senators, Cicero, but concluded that he would not commit or would simply slow things down. Mm -hmm. At first, it was proposed that they kill Caesar, Antony and Lepidus. The latter... They wanted to kill all three. Interesting. The two were the next most powerful Caesarians, so killing them would effectively remove all the faction's significant leadership. Brutus, however, opposed this. He argued that this was to be a surgical removal of a tyrant, not mm. a widespread political purge. The other conspirators relented. Caesar would soon be leaving on his Parthian campaign, where, surrounded by soldiers, he would be untouchable, so they had to strike while he was in Rome. When Caesar announced Man, they really they really wanted to get it done quick, didn't they? Announced a Senate meeting on the Ides of March, just four days before he was scheduled to leave, the conspirators decided that this would be the perfect opportunity. Caesar would be separated from his entourage, the conspirators could all be in the same place without raising suspicion, mm. and they were confident that, when the attack began, other senators would quickly come to help them. So they were thinking that the scent. Oh wow! It shows you. Uh, do you know what? that? That sort of that sort of um, reminds me of mob mentality. If they see fifty of us doing it, then they're all going to come help us. Um, so they sort of were hoping on mob mentality there. That's that's where I sort of see that going. So that's got sort of really interesting. Gladiators were scheduled to fight in the theatre adjacent to the Senate chamber the day of the meeting, and this, this would give the conspirators the perfect excuse to have armed soldiers nearby, as Decimus Brutus owned many gladiators. The night before the session, Caesar invited Lepidus and Decimus to his house for dinner. They talked long into the night, and eventually the philosophical question was asked, what is the best way to die? To which Caesar responded without hesitation that a sudden death was best. Throughout the night, Caesar's wife, Calpurnia, is said to have had dreams of Caesar's death, and in the morning, when Caesar was making his sacrifices, they were all foreboding. A superstitious man, Caesar decided to cancel the meeting, sending okay. Antony to dismiss the Senate. Caesar had also been drinking late the previous night, and a oh, hangover might have been peak. influencing his decision. When the conspirators heard of this, they sent Decimus to convince Caesar to come to the Senate. Decimus told Caesar that the Senate would be insulted. I didn't realize that he was uh, he was drunk at the same time. I didn't realize that at all. Unless he dismissed them in person, and Caesar relented, trusting his friend's judgment. Meanwhile, word of the conspiracy had started to leak. A friend of Caesar's had heard of the plot and didn't know the details. He immediately ran to Caesar's house to warn him, but, but he, finding Caesar had already, already left yeah. for the Senate... Ah, oh, that's so unfortunate that he got there late. ...decided to wait at his house. Ah, oh, he didn't go after him either. Oh no. Another friend would also find out about it that same day and ran to the theatre of Pompey to try and warn Caesar but would arrive too late. Lastly, as Caesar was making his way to the theatre, someone slipped him a message. Surrounded by crowds of supporters and okay. constantly having messages passed to him, Caesar slipped it into his robes without reading it. Oh no, how unfortunate. There were so many opportunities that 
he he might have been able to actually get out of it. But he was also hung over. Oh no. Later found on his body, it was a warning of the upcoming assassination. No way. When Caesar arrived at the theater, Antony, the conspirators, and the other senators were all there. The conspirators were acting casual, despite the daggers hidden under their togas, mm. but they were secretly nervous. A man approached Casca and said, Brutus has told me everything, which shocked Casca, before he realized that the man was referring to his intention to run for Edile. Another senator. Uh, what's Edile? Like, let me know what Edile is. Yeah, it's it's a real shame that it wasn't it it wasn't to be. I really wish, yeah, yeah, I really wish fate had of had of intervened, but it just it wasn't it wasn't going to be the case, was it? Peter approached Caesar, talking to him in hushed tones. The conspirators grew anxious. Brutus subtly signaling that they were to kill themselves rather than be captured before it became clear that the senator had simply been petitioning Caesar on another matter. Oh. Despite more bad sacrifices, Caesar was convinced to go ahead with the meeting and entered the chambers. The senators followed, but Antony was quickly pulled aside by Trebonius. Okay. Caesar, a veteran with 35 years of experience, mm. was in good shape despite his age. Antony was known as a hedonist, and he was also a veteran of 10 years, strong, quick to anger, and an incredible soldier. Okay. Together, the two of them might have been able to fight a way out, so the conspirators had entrusted Trebonius, one of Antony's closest friends, with keeping him out of the way. Ah, uh, that's why Antony got pulled to the side. I was wondering why that was, that was important, that makes sense. Uh, the others are responsible for maintenance in the public buildings and relegation. Ah, perfect. Thank you very much, Light. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I, of course I knew it was a position of state, but I was wondering what one. So, Light said it's the uh, maintenance of public buildings and the regulation of public festivals. So, that's quite interesting. I'm not going to say what it was again because I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. Caesar was seated at the front of the Senate, under a statue of Pompey. Kimba approached Caesar, petitioning him to recall his brother from exile. The other conspirators gathered around, encircling Caesar, and suddenly Kimba pulled Caesar's toga down, exposing his shoulder, the signal for the attack. Caesar, who as dictator was protected by law, pushed Kimba back, saying, this is violence. Casca, Caesar's childhood friend, then attacked the seated Caesar, but mm. missed, only cutting his shoulder. Caesar grabbed Casca's hand, shouting, Casca, what are you doing? Mm. While Casca said, He's panicking. Spontaneously oh. shouted, Brother, help me! Caesar was able to rise and violently throw Casca away from him, but by the time he did, Casca's brother, Servilius, had attacked, stabbing mm. him in the side. Caesar continued to fight back, but was attacked from all directions, Cassius slashing his face, Macolianus stabbing him in the back, and Decimus slicing his thigh. Still, Caesar fought back as much as he could. Brutus was the next to approach him, and Caesar sunk down, either due to blood loss or having ah. now lost the will to fight, and Brutus stabbed him in the groin. Caesar pulled his toga over his head to hide his face, just as Pompey had done when he had been betrayed and murdered. Oh, wow. 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 So savage as well. It's just such a savage mob murdering of, of a man, you know? The betrayal is so real, like... Like, it's... Ah, oh, I just... I feel bad for him. Like, the guilt is hitting me, and I'm not even committing it. Like, it's crazy. Caesar resigned himself it is just to cowardly murder. And died in a pool of blood at the base of the statue of Pompey. Suggestions that his last words were either, and you, Brutus, or, and you, my son, are largely disproven by the ancient sources. Mo yeah, I, I bet you could barely even, like, actually get a word out. Like, uh, being stabbed that many times, I bet you just his mouth was full of blood, he could barely string a sentence together, and the shock as well. I bet the shock hit his body.
just simply saying he groaned in pain. His body had 23 stab wounds, many of which happened after his death when the conspirators had gathered around to stab his body, some even wounding each other. Now that's just sadistic. So, so it's kind of sadistic stabbing him after he was dead, but wounding each other just made it even more sadistic, like super sadistic, like, like, oh, mob mentality, man. Like it's crazy how human beings can go from one state to the other, um, just just when something kicks off like that. Um, yeah, it's just so, that's so interesting. Only the six mentioned senators stabbed him while he was alive, mm. which means that less than 1% of the Senate had actually taken part in the assassination. Furthermore, the analysis of his corpse at the time determined that only one, the attack from Servilius, was fatal. The fact that they could not strike a fatal blow on an unarmed, already wounded man perhaps tells us something about quite how panicked they were. Yeah. Out of 60 conspirators, most did not even take part in the stabbing, suggesting that many had joined simply out of political opportunism. Mm, Gaius Julius that makes Caesar sense. had been assassinated by men who had either been spared by him or trusted as friends. Dio later wrote of Caesar that if he could have chosen, he probably would have wished he could have died at Munda as a soldier. Even the ancient historians oh, who are wow. of Caesar, such as Dio, recognize that such a death was somewhat of a tragic end mm. for some caesar that this this death is is such a barbaric and brutal death for someone who wasn't the worst fascist or dictator in the world you know um who was very lenient who didn't put his people through terror or war well, no, he did put them through war, that's a mistake, but didn't sort of um, rule by terror or the people didn't fear him, you know, and yet he was still murdered in such a brutal way. There was a warmongering tyrant driven by a lust for personal glory. To others, Caesar was... Okay, that, that does also make sense. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. To, to be able to say that you were one of the people who stabbed... Caesar is probably one of the reasons why you've done it after he's dead. That would make sense. It's still sadistic though, because even even doing that is sadistic to, in my eyes. I think. Tyrant, driven by a lust for personal glory. To others, Caesar was a leader who tried to fix a system that was clearly broken, and was killed before that goal could be reached. So I think it's a mixture of both those things, right? Because I. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say warmongering. He did create wars and he did go to a lot of wars, but I would say that he was a kind of tyrant for personal glory, but he was also a good leader to his people and he did want to fix the system, but he thought he could only do that himself. And that's where I think the issue sort of come from, um, that, that, that he sort of took so much power into his own hands because um, he also wanted that personal glory, um, which also driven him. So even though he wanted to help his people, he wanted to do it for the personal glory as well. ...system that was clearly broken and was killed before that goal could be reached. Mm -hmm. Some see Caesar as a combination of both or something in between. Yeah, there you go. I think you guys know where I stand. <laughs> what all can agree on, however, is that Caesar changed the mm -hmm. world. That By he did. accident or design, his actions ultimately led to the rise of the Roman Empire mm -hmm. and all the effects, good and bad, that would bring. Two of the most interesting things that Caesar has left us today are two questions. Okay. Did Caesar make the world a better place? And what would have happened if he had survived? two very very important questions and i want to know what you guys think on both of those we're planning to cover the civil wars in the aftermath of caesar's assassination in the near future okay so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see them
and you know I'm subscribed and I've got that bell button if you haven't already make sure that you do head over to her page and also like comment and subscribe um yeah I, I really enjoyed that one